Guys, welcome back to the Almost Friday podcast. And before we jump into this episode, we want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, True Classic Tees. It's the perfect gift for your wish list. And there's plenty of t-shirt cheer. Thanks to them, you're going to wear their clothes. You're going to feel confident. You're going to look good. And you know what? The ladies are going to love it. And you can get 25% off at trueclassic.com slash beers. That's B-E-E-R-S. Free shipping included on purchases over $100. That's 25% off at trueclassic.com slash beers. Santa won't be the only one slaying, thanks to True Classic. Now, let's get into the episode. Welcome back, guys. Liam. Hey. Hey. Welcome back to the Almost Friday podcast. It's me, Liam, and... Uh, Will, and today we got a lot to talk about. We're going to check in with Rusty. Um, we're going to pitch a few characters we've been working on. I got some good ones that I'm very excited to show you. Good. Um, and I think that some re- some real substance is going to come out of them. That's good. That's good. Yeah. How you been? What's up? Uh, I've been great. Uh, someone tried to break into my house last night, a meth, a meth head. Mm. A meth head. What happened? Um, just to clarify, he could have been a crackhead. I don't know. Um, I can't tell the difference. There's nuances that I don't quite understand, but... Uh, there's a Venn diagram somewhere, and he was in the middle of meth head and crackhead. And he just started banging on everyone's windows and ringing my doorbell 20 times in a row at 4.30 a.m. And he just walked through your front gate there? Yeah, he just walked through the gate, and he kept screaming like, well, th- this is how I knew he was on drugs. Because he came up to our window, and he said, Senor, uh, can you please call 911? I swear to God I'm not on drugs. And that, to me, was the dead giveaway, mm-hmm. that he was on a lot of drugs. At least he called you senor, though. That's pretty nice. Yeah. I don't know. He kept saying, like, there's a nasty man following me around, and I just want you to call 911. And he had his phone, so he could have called 911. And um, So, wait. Let me let me catch up here. It's 4 a.m. You're dead asleep in bed, and then you start hearing a banging on your door? Um, yes. I hear banging, and um, I look outside, and the guy is, like, 25 dressed like a totally normal dude he's like yeah he looks he looks he doesn't look like he is on crack at 4 30 a.m what if he needed help what if he was being honest he didn't need help because he kept looking around and he was like tripping dick and nobody opened up their door to say hey man people would open their window one of my neighbors was like what the fuck do you want and he was like can you please call 911 and we called 911 three times they didn't show up that's the funniest part of the story to me is that you you called the police a f- couple times and they were like, nah. And he was waiting around for the police to get there. That's strange. That is yeah. also, yeah, that's a testament to how fucked up L.A. is. Unless someone's bleeding or there's a gun you can see, the cops are not yeah. going to come. We're like, yeah, there's a crackhead trying to break into our apartment. And they were like, okay. And? Oh, you, you want, you that's that's your emergency. Okay. They're like, yeah, how about we send one of our canine units over there? Psych, no, you're not getting anything, dude. <laughs> it's fun. I'll send over a fucking dove with a badge on it. Just have it fly <laughs> around for a little bit. It's just three kids in a trench coat show up. Did you ever think about going out there and, you know, cracking some skulls? Uh, I No, I had a golf club with me because I got, I got scared because he was ringing our doorbell 30 times in a row, so I thought it was like an aggressive guy who was like trying to trick me into opening the door. Um, actually, I wear a Fitbit to sleep to track my sleep. And you, I looked at my, um, at 4.30 a.m., it's like a, a solid line, and then it spikes to 150 beats per minute, and then goes back down, right, like, after he left. It was so funny. I don't know what I would do in that situation. I didn't know either. I just sent Catherine out there, and I said, can you go talk to him? I'm really trying to, I'm trying to get some sleep. And I pushed her outside, and I locked the door, and I said, when I hear him walk away, you can come back in. Hmm. And I haven't seen her since. I think she got rid of him. That's for the listener. Catherine is Will's girlfriend that he lives with, and she went out there and she's been missing for a few days. So nobody's mm-hmm. heard from her. So she's always going on long walks, though. She always so goes she's out. probably just one of those. Yeah, it's funny because California is not a, a stand your ground state. Because some states, we were talking about this a little bit. How Texas, you were saying, if someone just like accidentally steps one foot onto your property, you can just tie them up and and put them into prison in your backyard for like ten years and do yeah. whatever you want to them and then. And legally, that's okay. But if, yeah, if they if they're like jogging, if they're just on a jog and they accidentally cross your property line, you can like store them in a shipment container hmm. and starve them to death. Hmm. Yeah, but in L.A., you gotta just like you we know, call that throwing the book at them in, hey. tex- in Texas. Hey, just having fun. Just having fun. Does just... your family own guns in Texas? No. 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 But your boys. 
I think we have like an old Remington shotgun. Nice. That like my grandpa had because he was in the military. I think I don't know. Do you ever get home from like a bad day of high school and just yeah. put that on the coffee table and stare at it for a while? Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm-hmm. Nice. What happened that day at school? All I remember is the cold taste of cobalt pressed up against the roof of my mouth. It's a familiar taste. <laughs> kind of ironic, isn't it? A little bit. Anyway, that's that's how I've been. Yeah, that's wild. I don't I don't have anything like that. I've never had anyone uh get into my little complex there. Mm-hmm. But I do have a neighbor with schizophrenia, two doors down. Very fun guy to listen to. Uh I've he, heard him. It's awesome. Yeah, he'll twice a month, sometimes, you know, more frequently, he'll he never leaves his home. He lives in what looks like Monster House from the movie Monster House. It's all fucked up and shit. And uh, he just screams out from the top window in his house about how uh, the police aren't doing anything. The microwaves are ruining uh, the mind and bodies of young (laughs) men in L.A. And he apparently I I had to do research on him because the day I moved in is the day he was screaming for the first time I heard it. Like me and Jason moved in. And then there was just this guy screaming. That was your welcome to the West Side yeah. moment. And I thought something was happening. And then my neighbor was like, no, that's he does this all the time. And I was like, shit, what's his story? And apparently he's British, which is always interesting because he has a British accent when he's screaming. And he used to be a professor. I forget the school, but it was like a decent school. So he's very eloquent. And he's he sounds certain when he's yelling mm-hmm. that when if you listen to him for long enough, you'll kind of be like, is he making points? Maybe the microwaves are fucking with my shit, and I don't even know about it. But he goes off for hours. Police never come. He calls the cops a ton of times. <laughs> they know at this point not to come. Because he'll scream out like 10 times, I'm calling the police. I'm calling the police again. And then he threatens my neighbor and shit. It's very strange, but almost almost entertaining in a way. And he sounds, I mean, he's got like a crisp British accent, and he sounds fucking important. He sounds like he knows mm-hmm. what he's talking about. It's very he weird. He does. He probably has schematics all over the place. Mm-hmm. Of the White House, of your apartment. Yeah. Dude, what about that girl? You've had a, a spookier encounter than that. That random girl that came up to you on the street. Dude, that was so fucking scary. It was oh. like a, a year ago. Yeah, I was walking uh, to Will's apartment. Will lives down the street from me, a couple blocks. And I'm walking down, vibing, headphones on, music up. Beautiful fucking day. And uh, someone yells at me from behind me. And... Like, hey! And I was like, holy shit. And then I turn around, and there's this small woman standing there. And she's young. She's probably like 25. And she goes, you can't drink in public. And I'm holding, a, <laughs> a, like, a monster energy drink. And I was so fucking scared that I was like, it's a monster energy drink. And then I kind of forget what happens next, but she, st- I, I remember saying that, and then her staring at me for 10 seconds, and nobody said anything. Wasn't she, like, telling you about, like, the death, the death, the drums of death or something? That was the text she sent when I got to your apartment. Mm. Uh, so she said something very strange, very off. I, I thought she was like going to stab me. That's mm-hmm. how I felt. I felt this girl wants to cut my throat. And then we just kind of parted ways. And I walked into your... I, she, she was like, can I have your number? Mm-hmm. And I was so scared. I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. And I just we just exchanged contact information. Mm-hmm. She immediately texted me. The second I got into your apartment, it was just like, hey, do you like drums? And that question was scary. And then I let you answer. You took the phone and you said something fucking insane to her. And then she said, well, listen to these, listen to this drum song. She sends me a link to a Spotify song of a creepy ass, scary little drum tune. It sounded like the drums that you hear when you're getting marched into like a cannibal tribe that's going to eat you alive. Yeah. Uh, It's like when you have to go raid Mordor. Yeah. It was fucking spooky. And then uh, I said, oh, yes, these are beautiful drums. Blah, blah, blah. Never talked again. Got drunk, hit her up. <laughs> and then, thank God, she didn't respond. Um, that. And that's it. But it was fucking spooky. You run into some ghouls and goblins in the streets of L.A., dude. There's some ghouls, goblins. There's some cretins. Mm. There's some denizens hiding in the sewers. Ooh, lizard people. It's like, uh, what did you call it? You were like, it's like Nightmare Before Christmas when they all crawl out of the trees at once. Yeah, they I all... what you're... <laughs> I was like, well, I was like, it's Halloween every day in Venice. <laughs> every fucking day it's Halloween. But yeah, it is. It's like the town in A Nightmare Before Christmas. When the, It's like when you're walking home from work, it's like Jack Skellington walking home. And they're all like, hey, Jack. And it's just like a, a guy who's with no teeth and no eyes. And he's just staring at you. You're like, what's up? I recognize this guy. I see him every day on my walk home. 
and it's spooky. I do like it though. It's very entertaining. Mm-hmm. Like the screamer outside. Oh, that was so awful. there's a we have this guy who hangs outside of our office sometimes. Hot Rod. Hot Rod. I uh, wears a Mavericks jersey, Maverick jersey, mm-hmm. um, and just sc- you, you're good at doing the scream. Do a scream. He would literally. I feel kind of bad. Like I'm not trying to make fun of him, but he was, he was like the most aggressive person I've ever seen in my life. We can make fun of the mentally. He would Ill. he would like run up to people and be like, <laughs> and he like he wouldn't say words. He would go. <laughs> but then the best part is he would like do like if you're watching someone do a play and they're like playing two characters, they like stand to the side, and do one voice and do the other. So he's like having a conversation with himself like this. <laughs> And then he and then he just grabbed his cart that was like ten feet tall, stuffed with random objects and trinkets and coins, and went on his merry way. Emily, you thought that was funny—that mentally ill man having an episode. You thought I'm just that laughing because that was literally Will last week talking to himself when you left the room. True. Um, hey, hey, I got some. Wait, do you want to talk to Rusty? You want? Let's do characters. I because I got some good characters I want to pitch you. Go. Okay, this is good. Well, hold on. Yeah, yeah. I need my phone. Your phone's under that pillow. What the heck? Okay, this is good. All right, we'll go. We'll go uh, one for one. Okay, so Liam and I are gonna do a segment. We, um, a lot of what we do all day is we pitch each other characters or sketches. So we want to come in here and do and and kind of run through them, and they're yeah. very fun. And yeah. most of them never come out of come to fruition. Ninety percent of them will be like, "That's terrible. Kill it." Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. Who do I want to start with? This one's so bad. I don't. I actually don't even know if you're gonna laugh. Okay. I'm. I'm. I'm not gonna. Okay. This is Price Wellwater. Okay. He is your roommate, and he can only use one of his senses at a time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ready? Yeah. So let's pretend you just got home from work. Ready? What's up, Price? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Price. What's up? <laughs> you sniffing? Liam, hey. I knew I smelled you. Oh, hey, Bryce. How's your day? Oh, sorry, what? Hey, hey, Bryce, how's your day? Are you listening? Yeah, I like it. Because I can't listen and see you. I like it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I actually like it a lot. But I just like the idea of him staring at you and... It's more... Because <laughs> he can only smell... It's more... Fasc- oh, shut up, Emily. It's a fascinating concept more than anything, honestly. It's... I uh, <laughs> fucking I like it a lot. That sounds like my grandma. I'm not joking. Why? That's why I'm shaking my. Because she can only. She has, my my grandma literally has a nervous tick where it's like like her nervous tick is like sniffling. Are you she sure she isn't just constantly. a cokehead? Emily, your grandmother's a coke addict. She's not. She just has a nervous tick. She's a coke it's addict. It's she has a disgusting tick. habit. She can't stop shoveling she, fucking she, white powder up her she's nose. She's doing coke. Is uh, she a lively woman for her age? She's very anxious. That's the coke. That she's addicted to. That would to. be the. I don't know why I didn't think about that. Mm. 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 Do you have any fun characters? Yeah, I got one. I got one. Um, okay, so um, this is. I'm gonna set it up a little bit. Does he have a name? Yeah, yeah. But like, okay, I want to do yeah, it live. Yeah. Uh, so we're both at our. We have we're dads. We have sons, and we're at. Uh, a soccer game. Ooh, I we don't like, we, I like we don't know each other, but our okay. sons are on the same team. Uh, say something positive about the game, like nice goal or something. Okay, like we're watching the game. This okay. is the game. You know, I think it, coach has done a great job with our boys. I hey, I think the same thing. They're looking pretty good. Um, yeah. Sorry, what was your name? Uh, Will. Will. Mike Davis, but everyone calls me fuck. <laughs> sorry. Mike Davis. Everyone call, you can call me fuck though. Who call your nickname? Like fuck. Let's go, Tim. And that's it. That's the. That's. The... <laughs> it's terrible. I know. It's so bad. No, it is so bad. It's funny. Yeah. My name is Mike Davis. Everyone calls me fuck. I like that. That I'm sorry. Was that his fraternity nickname? I don't know what his backstory is, but he. I thought it was great. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I was you, laughing. You hate me. You think I should die? Well, yes. All right. What's yours? Todd Lerfondler. Lerf. Ooh, I like him. So toddler fondler, <clears throat> toddler fondler. So he is your roommate five minutes before the house gets raided by the FBI. Okay. All right. So I'm going to come into your room, and um. What am I doing for the for the <coughs> bit? You didn't touch any of my stuff. Okay. All right. 
Sup? Yo, what the player? What's up, Todd? How you doing? Uh, good. I was just reading. How's your weekend, man? It's good. Nice, nice. I kept it pretty low key. <clears throat> Dude, random question. Um, this morning at five thirty a.m., did you download any software into my laptop? No. It's all good if you did. I'm not mad at all. I just want to know. No, I didn't download any. Nice. Okay. Sweet. What's going on, Todd? Nothing, You're man. You're acting pretty weird. I'm just chilling. Oh, dude, I love the decor in your room. This uh, this is that Remington your dad get your your grandpa gave you, right? Yeah. Is that real? Yeah. That's a real gun with real ammo in it. Yeah. What What's going on, man? I'm just chilling, brother. I think I'm gonna get. You mind if I take this? Because I'm gonna. I want to get my grandpa one because he's like a big a, a war nut. Take so a I picture to, of it. Why do you need it? All right, and that's the character. I like it. I like. I, th- I was expecting the FBI to break in. Well, it's five minutes before. Oh, okay. Okay. So he's trying to. Spoiler. I don't want. You know. I. I like to let the audience uh, use their imagination to see where it's going. Spoiler. He's going to blow his head off with your Remington shotgun. Oh, he's going to commit suicide. And his name. You're going to believe this. Todd Lerfondler. Mm. Mm. I like it. You couldn't look more. You couldn't look un, more unhappy to be here. Is that the right way to say that? I probably. I uh, I like it. I thought you were going to do a suicide by cop thing, which is one of my favorite forms of uh, suicide. Well, Liam, that's the best part. We don't know where that bit goes. He takes a shotgun and runs out there. That's true. You know what? We were talking about this recently before I do my next character. Um, I think murder suicides are very blue collar. Something blue collar about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's the most blue collar way to go out. Like you you murder <laughs> you murder someone and you're like, hey, hand up, that's on me. <laughs> Don't need to get the taxpayer or the courts or the jail systems involved. I'm gonna handle this myself. Nobody else has to worry about it. And there's like think about it, you're saving the cops time. There's like very little paperwork. There's very little mental strain of dealing with that fallout. Yeah. It's kind of just like um it's kind of like I don't know. You're like wiping away your footsteps as you walk in the sand. It's just the the beach washing it away. It's actually it's very beautiful. It's a very natural part of being a, a being a human. It is beautiful in a way. It's like just we're gonna solve this right mm-hmm. now. I think every man. It's more of a guy thing. A murder suicide. Uh, I think every murder suicide right before it happens. There's a there's a 35 year old to 55 year old man in his garage and he slams down a DeWalt power drill and every murder suicide scene has an unfinished carpentry project yeah. going on in the garage. I think he looks down and he shakes his head to himself and that's the last th- true thought that goes through his head. Yes. Yes. Um, God. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's about the most masculine thing you can do. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, or Milwaukee. If you're a Milwaukee power tool guy, I don't, I don't judge. Are we sponsored by one of them, Emily? Neither. I know all the kids. Neither? Are... Neither. Okay. Maybe if you get off your phone, you get a... Yeah, who the okay. fuck are you texting over there? Oh, I was, re- I was reading this message that my old roommate sent me. She tends to, like, elaborate. Oh, my fucking God. No, I really want you guys to hear this. Oh, my God. We can cut this part. Oh. Well, we can cut this part. We can. If well, you what is it, then? It's just this message my old roommate sent me mm-hmm. said that, said uh, right that. before I left for L.A., and she was like... She just tends to say too much this is what she said i don't want you to think that i don't want to come back and hang out with you before you leave because i do want to hang out with you before you leave i am so stressed out that i am not back yet i did not expect work to be this crazy i thought i was going to come back in the morning i thought i was going to come back yesterday but my grandma was being going to be alone yesterday and i didn't want to do that to her. <laughs> and i thought i would come back today but i'm trying to come back tonight because i'm drowning in work and i want to hang out before you leave and i really don't want you to think that i don't want to hang out with you so i'm really trying to come back tonight so we can hang out i don't want you to think that i'm a bad friend or selfish uh, because i feel she bad literally sounds like she is on meth or having like a manic episode yeah i didn't like i couldn't even, that was word for word i don't even know <sighs> Honestly, though, Emily, it makes sense that, that that's the crowd around you. Yeah. People that are sending messages like that. That's on brand. Yeah, my veins hurt after listening to that. They're pulsating. Yeah. Um, anyways, all right, I'm going to do my next character here. Uh, I'm up, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, all right. Uh, this is a... Uh, we're newscasters, mm-hmm. so you're, we'll, we'll be doing a little uh, back and forth. Like, we're kind of... 
just reading the news. But I'm a newscaster, and my bones hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I am. What, what? How do you want me to? Uh, just chi- We'll be like reading some topical shit. We're kind of giving like the outline of like okay. it's coming up at seven. Shit do like you want that. me to start? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, and coming up at seven, we've got a great news story on a local high school and an act of generosity. Liam, it's and it's it's good. It's, 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 it's a good story. Uh, coming up at eight. Fuck it, my fucking bones hurt. Uh, we have a story about a sailboat that capsized off the coast of Maine. Fucking bones hurt. <laughs> Fuck. And at nine, we got sports with Timmy Matthews. Take it away, my fucking. Um, <clears throat> and and uh, you okay, man? Hey, can we cut? Can we go to commercial? My fucking my, my bones all hurt. Hey, Liam. Uh, hey, yeah. Liam. Are we in commercial break? I I know it's your first day, but that is unacceptable. I I don't know. I can't. I, all my bones hurt. Has this been? Was it? Ju- did it just start when we started it, recording? It, my my bones hurt. They've been hurting all day, and they're getting worse right now. Oh, what does it feel like? Hold on. Hey, on. hey, we're about to we're about to come back from commercial. All right, just, we're about to come back from all right, commercial. Just, all right, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh my god! Hello and, and, and uh, welcome back. Welcome back to the Channel Eight News. Oh, fuck, fucking bones. Okay, <laughs> okay. we got wet. <coughs> oh, Liam, you you had a, a segment you wanted to do about. <laughs> Has anyone called an ambulance? Yeah, I think. Can, hey guys, can we get an ambulance <sighs> on the way? Ow! There's no am. There's no hospital within twenty miles. Oh fuck! <laughs> that was I, I, that was a fun one. Uh, ooh, your mic's all screwed ooh, ooh, up. Sorry. Quick pause again, guys. We want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Arctic. Arctic makes these amazing coolers that keeps your beer cold and it keeps the vibe alive. I mean, look at this behemoth. How many beers you can fit in here? I don't know. Two thousand, three thousand, five thousand. I don't know. They, they literally haven't even come up with a number yet of how many beers can fit in here. It's amazing. And the prices are phenomenal. You get your bang for your buck at arcticoutdoors.com. That's R-T-I-C outdoors.com. Now let's get back into this episode. Yeah, so, all right, sorry. We had technical difficulties. I broke the mic on during the newscaster who, who Which I, hurt. I think, I mean, that's very immersive. It was. He would destroy his equipment and bring down the production. Yes. Um, so yeah, that was newscaster whose bones hurt. I mm-hmm. think uh, I think we you know I like it. I, I do like it. Okay, I have um, I have two more, and they both are really bad. Let me hear one. Okay, this is uh, Farkas Foghorn. Farkas Foghorn. Okay, that's his name, Farkas Foghorn, and he's um, we're roommates. It's my birthday. I want you to wish me happy birthday, without having to tell you it's my birthday, but you won't. So I just keep dropping you hints, but you won't wish me happy birthday. Do I know it's your birthday and I don't want to wish you one? Or you right? don't know it's my birthday, but it's like pretty obvious I'm trying to drop hints. Gotcha. And you don't want to wish me happy birthday. Ready? Yep. <clears throat> What's up, Liam? What's up, Farkas? Dude, you going on that date tonight still? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ugh. What's that like? Officially 26 years of being single. Oh. You've never had a girlfriend? Nope, tw- twenty six years without having a girlfriend. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'll be back at like ten. Maybe, uh, I don't know. I might, are you, are you going out tonight to celebrate? To celebrate? No, I just meant like, are you going out tonight in general? Yeah, I might go out with her after my date. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> that was. No, keep going. I like it, Emily. You have to keep going. At least. Emily, please don't ever give us any creative notes during a podcast. Holy shit. We need to give her that little Hannibal Lecter mask. Yeah. And just cram her in that fucking corner and stack boxes on top of her. Emily's like, you know what I know how to do? Bits. Psych. We're going to sew your jaw shut. Yeah. <gasps> she flipped us off. Emily! Up. Rude. She's being a rude woman again. She is being nippy today. Nippy, nippy, nippy. All right. Um, This one I can just do myself. Uh, okay. This is Mike Davis getting a coffee at Starbucks. Uh, venti cold brew for fuck Davis. <laughs> That's pretty good, right? Am I supposed to be the? Nah, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> okay. Wait, let me let me do one more. And that's a callback. Uh, yeah, so that's a little bit of a callback. Um, I'm the blind bouncer. Okay, you're coming up. Uh, just hand me your ID. Hey, how you doing, man? What's up? It's my ID right there. <laughs> Where, pal? I can't fucking see anything. Sorry, right there. 
Where is it? It's uh, your whole your it's, uh, your hands right on it. Yep. I can't fucking see this. I'm blind. <laughs> I can't fucking see. Can I go in? I don't know. I don't know why they hired me to do this job. I am over 21. Can I just go? I in? don't know how I'm be, I'll ever be able to know if you are or not. I can't fucking see anything. So what do you want me to do? I just, I don't know. Prove to Can, me that you're 21 or older. Like this is the, this is the proof I have. I can't see it. I'm just, I don't want to be, fr- I don't want to. <sighs> Can you call the manager over? Uh, Mike. Dude, there's 30 people behind me. I don't know. I wouldn't know that. I can't. I'm sorry. See. That was that was that's rude, dude. That was rude. Oh, I wasn't born this way. Oh, here he comes. Oh, where? Right behind you. Hello, sir. I I'm showing him my ID, and uh, I'm twenty. I'm trying to get in. I'm 21. Do you want to look at my ID? I talked to him real quick. I told him. Oh. Sorry, pal. Unless you can, unless I can see it somehow. I can't, you're not getting in here. Can you read Braille? No. <laughs> I just became blind. I don't know Braille How yet. recently? Like today. What happened? I don't know. I just got on, I got off the bus and then I couldn't see fucking shit. How did you get here? I got on the bus. And the then bus when I, drops you off right here. At the right bar. outside the bar. And then luckily I just knew how to, I just walked up to where I usually stand and I can't, I don't know what to tell you, man. I'm just trying to get paid. I got to fucking... I gotta buy groceries and shit. I can't do this. Do you think something happened to me on the bus? Uh, he went inside. Oh, okay. And that's the blind bouncer. And that's fun. What do you think of that one, Emily? No, I don't actually want to know. It's yeah. more of a, a rhetorical question. That's a really good one. Thank you. And that could. It, I like that one a lot. Okay. I've got one. I got a quick hitter. Do you have a quick hitter? After this, yeah. Okay, I got a really quick hitter. I only have one more. Okay, well, I got a quick hitter. You do your quick hitter, and then I'll do. I'll finish off with my last character. Excellent. Okay, this is um, you and your your uh, girlfriend are driving through a secluded town to go to this cabin you're renting for a nice little weekend vacation, and I am a old man on a rocking chair uh, at a gas station that's just like in the middle of nowhere. It's like that is, and you walk in to get gas, and I'm sitting there, and I'm in a rocking chair, and you you say to me. You asked me for directions. Hey, sir, do you know which way is uh, Dunn Falls? We're trying to get to the waterfall nearby. There's a storm coming. Oh. Should I be here any moment. It looks pretty clear out. I don't see any clouds. It's, so- it's always clear before it gets bad. And that's it. That's the whole character. Oh, I w- keep going. I like him. Keep going. It's always clear before it gets bad. Right. And... Is there any any way you know which direction we could find Dunn Falls, the waterfall in town? We're trying to just go take some pictures there. Lots of girls went missing not too far from here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, what'd you say? The man in black. What? The man? I don't know what you're talking about. My boy. My boy's here somewhere. But I wouldn't trust him. See, I, there. Well, that's that's the whole. It's a quick hitter. I like it. I he's like it. fun. Yeah, he's a lot of fun. I like that a lot. And now, you, and you have one. Yes. Uh, this is a. Uh, I'm the nervous businessman, okay. and uh, uh, we just closed the deal, and uh, you're we're shaking hands, and you're telling me how excited you are to do business with me, and then I'll respond to you. Okay. So you can start out. We're already shaking hands. I can't move that much because I want to fuck up my mic. Okay. Ah, oh, dude, I mean, this is going to be great for both of us. I think we made a great decision here. I'm so happy to be... I'm very happy to be doing work with you. Yeah, great. Ooh. Uh-oh. Are you... Whoa, here. Got a trash can. It's really... Just, Are you sick? No, no, no. I just... I need this deal to go through. I'm sorry. I'm a little nervous. I get a little bit... Oh. Was... Uh, my, 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 my body... Is, get I a get, big, big quota coming up? Yeah. Um... So just before we signed, the, 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 we dot, dot our I's and cross our T's here. What was, what was the account number that you you were going to give to me? Uh, you know what? I might actually have my team look this over one more time before we commit. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> we'll get back to you in a few weeks, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Hey, Veronica, can you send security up? 
there's a man who's rock hard in my office, <laughs> puking all over the floor. And that's the nervous business businessman. Businessman. All right, that's it. That's that was him. Okay, I've I've the uh, one more, and it's it's not that good. Okay, neither okay. was that one. This is um, you're a barber, and you just gave me th- the literal worst haircut ever given to a human being on the planet. Mm-hmm. Okay, ready? Um, oh, sorry. I'm your barber. You're the barber. Okay. And you've just given me the worst haircut a human being has ever received. It's a, that's an objective score. Okay. Um. So how's this? How you like this length? I think this is a good cut. What do you? Oh think? my god. Yeah, dude. This is great. Oh, I love it. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 I never usually go this short, um, but I, I really, yeah, I really like what you did. Oh, you like it? Absolutely, dude. Oh, awesome. <sighs> did, did you still want to post those pictures on your Instagram? Yeah, it's to, like a three sixty slow mo video. Totally. To, uh, totally. Might just play like a Drake song, a Drake song under. Right. It. Oh, I love it though, man. I, I'll tag you. Y- yep. <clears throat> I'll throw that shit on my story, for please. Sure. And if you could tag us. Tell your friends if you if you refer refer some of your friends to me, I'll uh, I'll give you a discount the next time. It's cut. it's awesome, dude. I wish I could pay you more money. Oh, all right. And that's the guy who received the worst haircut of his life. But he's still being friendly about because it. Because that's every time I receive a haircut, it's the worst haircut I've ever received. Why? I don't know. I hate myself. You're a handsome guy. You got a good head of, head of hair on you. Stop it. Cut I told you it I, out. I told you my last haircut story. Uh, yes. I. The lady that cuts my hair is awesome. Uh, but the last time I went and got a haircut, she was she was like, "Oh, can I wash your hair first? And I was like, "Yeah, sure." She's washing my hair, and then she's doing like massaging my scalp with shampoo, and then kind of just slows down to a stop, and then she's just standing over me, staring into my eyes, <laughs> for not that long, but like five five seconds mm-hmm. straight. And so I just go, like nervously, like, "Hey, what's up?" <laughs> and she goes, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry." I've been uh, microdosing mushrooms all week, That's and I so think awesome. I took too much today. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just tripping a little bit too hard. And I just said, oh, all right. And then she sat me down in the chair and just held scissors over my head for 20 minutes. And she really didn't cut much of my hair. <laughs> like, she she cut my hair for like five minutes and then stopped and was like, how do you like it? And I was like, it's perfect. That's awesome. And it was like 60 bucks for like no hair getting cut off, but it was fun. That's got to be so difficult to cut hair when it looks like it's flowing like the ocean you're, and you're you don't know which parts are like you're apologizing to each piece of hair that you cut yeah. off so I feel like she's so... cutting hair and it seems like more hair is growing back <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she keeps cutting it that must be one of the hardest things to do on mushrooms what else is pretty hard to do on mushrooms operate a motor vehicle obviously pretty um, tough. um talking to girls is pretty easy on mushrooms talking to anyone on mushrooms is actually really easy. yeah uh, for me it's natural dude i can just be like i'm not here um, wait, actually, I wanted to say this before I forget. This is not that funny of a story, but one time I was, um, I was like a 12 year old kid. I go to sports clips to get a haircut. Cause my dad, as my dad's turn to figure out like where I'm getting my haircut, sports clips go in ladies on her phone the whole time, literally says no words to me. I come back home. I look my mom in the eyes. I say, how is it? She breaks down crying because it was <laughs> so bad. <laughs> she drove me like across town to like a salon to like get it fixed up. Oh my but God. But it was like such a bad haircut. She legitimately started crying. That's fucking hysterical. It was like, it was like in the Godfather, like, what did they do to my boy? <laughs> they massacred my boy. They massacred my boy. Uh, my mom one time just was like, all right, I'm going to give you and your brother haircuts. And <laughs> I was probably like 11 or 12. My brother was like eight or nine. And uh, I was like, okay, Sean can go first. And so she's cutting up my brother's it's hair. Very smart move. Yeah. And I just see like where she's starting the back of his hairline. She cut his <laughs> hair up to like above the little like <laughs> hook of the head. It's like, like it was, it's like above the top of his ear. It was insane. And I, I start, me and my older sister are crying laughing because we see my mom do this and like we walk back over we're like what the fuck are you doing my mom was like shut up don't <laughs> my mom knew she fucked up and my brother just starts bawling his eyes out he's like why 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 did you do that and then uh yeah that was the last time she ever tried cutting hair that's, that's not so her funny i feel like that's like a homeschool thing yeah like the mom cutting the hair that reminds me also there was this uh when my brother was like two uh, me and my older sister, my mom was like 
in another room on a phone call for like five minutes and left this in there. And we just got a bunch of green paint and painted <laughs> my two year old brother head to toe green. <laughs> like I have a distinct memory of with a paintbrush painting his little penis green. <laughs> like I, I, he was naked. You painted his penis? I painted his whole body green. I remember his toes and everything. She came back out. She was like, what the fuck? Like it was, <laughs> she was like, I, I was, she was gone for less than five minutes and we painted her baby completely <laughs> green. Penis, toes, eyebrows, I can't believe ears. You painted his penis. I remember it. It's like one of my earliest memories is painting my younger brother's <laughs> penis green. Does he remember it? I don't think he remembers There's it. There's no way. He like he's like that didn't happen. I'm like, dude, we it did. <laughs> it fucking happened for sure. I remember it. Oh my god. We used to do just anytime my mom wasn't looking, I'd also just go out onto the roof. There was a <laughs> there was a window I could at my old house where I could just get onto the roof really easily. It's like one time she's like on the phone and my neighbors came over and they're like, you're like five-year-old son's hanging out on the roof. And I would just be on the roof with a bag of uh, chocolate chips <laughs> that I would also steal. And I'd just be like, I'm the king of fucking this world, dude. I, the universe <laughs> runs through fucking me, dude. <laughs> that was a little rascal. Okay, uh, you were a rascal. Yeah. All what right, are we, we going to do with you? Uh, um, Ooh, let's check in. <clears throat> Ooh, let's. Check in with Rusty. Checking in with a Rusty. Play the jingle, Emily. Play that jingle. Checking in with Rusty. Touchstone. All right, here we go. <coughs> 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 Every fucking time. Every <laughs> fucking time. <laughs> he just sits down, coughs. And then holds a Nick Ultra. <laughs> he could have just cut that part. I'm so happy he didn't. <laughs> I fucking love this kid so much. What's up, guys? It's Rusty. Um, I just got back from Miami. I was at the Dolphins game, and I met this lady who I who I have a little crush on now. She's very pretty, and she um, was fun to be around, which was interesting. <laughs> um, I got blindsided by a global business strategy test today, and I had to pretend like I knew there was a test, but I didn't. I didn't know at all. And I actually don't think it went that horribly. Um, and I didn't cheat. I, I was honest. And um, so we'll see how that goes. I really hope to see this girl again, but I don't, I don't think it's, I don't know if it'll ever happen again. So if you guys have any advice on how to deal with that, I would, that would be super helpful. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you. You look great Aww. as usual. Um, so I'll see you guys soon. Um, hopefully this podcast it comes out soon because I really I need some advice. Love you guys. Bye. Thank you, Rusty. Love Bye, you Rusty. too. Um, you know what's so funny, first of all, about him saying he got blindsided by that test? Isn't this like midterms for college kids? Yeah. <laughs> so he got blindsided by a, a <laughs> midterm he knew about at the beginning of the semester? It's like, oh, that's such a bummer. No, who, he is not he doesn't. What the fuck? He's a smart kid. Though, yeah, he fine. doesn't need that shit. Uh, what is it? Global business? Something. He could figure it out. That kid's a businessman. The He's, amount of fucking worthless business classes I took Ruck, like, blows my mind. Rusty's got more business experience than that dang professor. I'd yeah, say. come on. He's he's wheeling and dealing brand deals. Yeah, it's fucking blowing them at, at clubs. Uh, uh, so he met this girl. Mm-hmm. He hit it off. Uh, from the Dolphins game. Mm -hmm. uh, Rusty went to the Dolphins game um, to it, review Hard Rock Stadium, which is awesome. He was invited by the Miami dapped Dolphins. Up, dapped up Giusecki, that was, which was awesome. That was an insane video of them just, just chopping yeah. it up on the sidelines. Yeah. We'll throw that in there. That's a hilarious fucking video. And there it is. Uh, oh, how did you do that, Emily? No, I'm just kidding. She, you don't do anything around here. He's got such a fascinating life. Uh, but so, yeah, what was he saying? He met a well, girl. Well, he met a girl there, um, and he, he said it was nice to be around her, which was surprising. 
I know, I know, what he, I know what he's kind of driving at there. Right. I don't know how much time we have to unpack all of that. I don't want to try. I he's he what he's saying is like he he hasn't uh, had feelings. I know I can I can translate for Rusty. He hasn't had feelings for a girl in a long time, like real emotional. romantic feelings. romantic feelings. So I think right. he was having those, which is what he was saying. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He appreciates the company of women, but I think he meant, mm-hmm. you know, he he was feeling some romance. But I was thinking it meant more like he's he's a uh, an empty shell and hasn't had feelings. That's nah, more not not a sexist angle, more of a b- bedrock angle. He's still, but he's good. He still got feelings. He's got feelings. Yeah, for for uh, old flames. Ah, uh, to be young again. He'll get drunk and bring up an old flame, and you'll it's like a fucking. 80 year old dude talking about Vietnam, <laughs> uh, which is funny. Uh, so he likes this girl. She's presumably still living in Miami. He doesn't know if she's ever, if they're ever going to see each other again, dude, that's romance. If, if God wants you to, t- you two to be together, you'll see her again. Dude, Don't make any effort. Give her a follow on the IG. I mean, rusty, you're going to be globe trotting mm-hmm. the rest of your life. Just like a rock star. Uh, and they, they got their bays at home. You're going to be fine. Make it work. Uh, we should. I think the sound for checking in with Rusty should just be a compilation of his coughs. Mm-hmm. Just him coughing. But maybe the coughs are like the drum beat. Yeah, yeah. And, and want, the, there's a beer cracking in there. I want to. Uh, I have more questions about the girl. Well, we we're, we're not gonna get any answers. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna. We get, can po- postulate. We can postulate. Uh, New word of the day. Write it down, Emily. Women love Rusty. You you didn't ask. Okay, whatever. Maybe Emily, what do you think about Rusty? Do you think he's a cute guy? Um, I think he has nice eyes. He, he said, I was like, um, I'm so sorry to hear about this young lady. And he was like, you would hate her. She's really cute. Huh. Huh. Uh, see, that that's another curveball that I, I'm swinging at and I'm missing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that meant. Um, she was really cute. Yeah, Rusty, women fall for Rusty. I fell for Rusty. It's so, dude, you look into his eyes, and he's authentic. He's an authentic guy with chest hair. Felt like I was getting sucked into a whirlpool when I looked at him. Mm. And the, the cracking at the at the deep black core of his eye. Yeah. I got to stop sharing a... Latching onto me. ...hotel room when we're on the road together with him. Because mm-hmm. we're, we're starting to get on a little, little bit different wavelengths here. Because uh, he's, you know... He's a young buck. Yeah. Young, he's, dumb, and full of cum. Yeah. Like the last time, our nights go so differently sometimes. Like when we were in Austin, I was back at the fucking hotel room by midnight smoking a joint, watching, uh, you know, Shia LaBeouf movies. And then he just pours into the room at three in the morning, right as I was about to go tuck my little weary eyes into bed. Mm -hmm. Bang, he walks in, party time. And I was like, fuck, dude, this is, how do you get that energy? Well, uh, anyways, uh, Rusty, my advice would be just do nothing. Shit kind of just works out for you. Like, you got you got this weird luck gene. So, uh, A, text me a picture of her because I'm curious. Because um, I'm, I'm guessing she's gorgeous. That's usually how it goes. And then he'll be like, yeah, this chick like wants to hook up with me. And then he shows me the hottest girl I've ever seen. And I'm like, dude, that's fucking good for you, man. I should have been fucking ranking beers when I was in college. But, yeah, man. If you really like her and you're like, it's kind of fun to do a little fantasy because you, the fantasy is probably what's enticing you more than the actual girl and run with that. So final words to Rusty. Final words to Rusty. Well, I thought you were going to have some. I was kind of just echoing you. Final words. Wait. See if the universe brings her back into your life, man. Play it, play it by ear. No, like if you want to reach out to her, that's cool. But who knows? Maybe she comes down to Orlando. Maybe she's out in L.A. this summer. You guys can mm-hmm. go walk on the beach as the sun sets with Ooh. Corona and a lime. Can I give my advice also? Mm-hmm. Let's work on building a schedule of some sort where you can track, like, you see the box, like, oh, November 25th. Inside the box, there's, like, global business test. And you can be like, oh, I know that that test is coming up. So it's, like, a way to remind yourself, like, you see what I'm saying? I yeah. Don't know, is that... Yeah, get your academics in line, too. Let's hit the books. Hit the books, guy. Hit the books and get out of here. And we'll yeah. build an empire. Mm-hmm. Smash those books, man. Smash them. Yeah, and smash that like button if you're listening to this podcast. Jesus Christ. Smash that subscribe button as well. 
I'm sorry, what? Emily, do you have any advice? He sounded like a wild boar over there was huffling over some food. It's their fucking grandma. Um, I, say, I say Rusty should play hard to get and not text her ever again. You are a manipulator and mentally ill. That's, yeah. a good, that's good advice, though. That's great advice. You got to manipulate women. Mm-hmm. You have to. Mm-hmm. I'm kidding. I'm just joshing. We're just having fun. Could you laugh so I don't seem like a psychopath? But you say shit like that all the time, so I didn't know if it I was don't. a joke or not. I don't. I don't say things like that. Yeah, you do. You show me your booklet. No. You have like you have flow charts. No. You do have flow charts. I couldn't make a flow chart. I'm not good with tech. All right, guys. Quick pause from the episode. We want to talk again about true classic teas, fellas. It really is the perfect gift. I mean, they feel so good, just enveloping your body like a warm blanket. They make me feel confident when i walk into a room i can look people in the eyes again trust me this is a gift you want to get your friends you want to get your girlfriend you want to get everyone one of these shirts and they've already helped over two million men look great in their tees and now you can save big get 25 percent off true classic with my exclusive link trueclassic.com slash beers and the discount doesn't stop there yes you heard that right you'll save even more during their sidewide sale support our show and check them out at trueclassic.com slash beers b-e-e-r-s let's jump back into the episode all i remember is emily's grandmother being a coke addict um yeah what else did we talk about emily was uh showing us a message from her mentally ill stalker friend that is going to end up killing her yeah. um, with a knife when it's happened. Any update on the hi guy? Hi. Hi. Still haven't heard from him, which I'm really glad about. Um, I kind of, <laughs> I, I like blocked him from seeing things on my Instagram so that he doesn't find out that I sometimes speak on this podcast just in case he wants to open it. Mm-hmm. Now, Emily, do you have a character for us? Uh, she doesn't. That's okay. Not today. Robert Greenscreen was good enough last. That was yeah, a good one. That might hold you over for a month. I'll, yeah, I'll think of one. I'll be ready. You better this. have a bank because we might popcorn in and be like, Emily, mm-hmm. hit us. I'll start collecting. Okay. Yeah. You got any dates coming up? Oh, I just canceled one this past weekend. Uh, literally an hour before. I felt so bad. Why? He didn't text me until 5 p.m. before the date, and it was like, the date was at 7.30, and I just, I didn't know if I was still going on this date, and I kind of like... Were you kind of expecting a text in the morning, like, hey, excited for the, the date morning, tonight? Not in the morning, but at least in the middle of the day, being like, hey, yeah, like, hey, excited for tonight, or something like that. So that's I a good that's a good tip for the guys out there. Yeah, yeah oh, and I, I just kind of like put myself in this mindset that it wasn't going to happen, so I like put my sweatpants on, and then I get a text yeah. at like 5.30, and I'm like, I- sorry. So, I mean, this is like what you were saying earlier before we started the pod. Like, it's so easy to manipulate women. Yeah. And just with a text <laughs> like that. You, or you finish it, because you were saying it way better than I ever could. I didn't say any of this stuff. You're making a, you're making a junk joke about me, dude. You're I am making a junk joke. It's not very funny. That's fucking bullshit. You're going to make me seem like a bad guy. I was making you seem like a bad guy, and I don't feel good about it. I'm a good man, and I love you. And, and you are a good man, and I learned so much from you. And um, come with this journey... Uh, come with us on this journey together uh, as we explore uh, the existential dread that comes with graduating and figuring it out along the way as you go off the seat uh, off the seat of your pants. Yes. And thanks. And thanks for joining. And Emily's grandmother is going to overdose on coke. Stop. Next episode, me and Angus are going to uh, braid our pubes together and jump off a one story building. <laughs> so tune in. You better tune, tune in. the fuck in. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.